Hey there, it's Christopher Dawes from the IBM Form Support Team, and I'm back again with another topic. How do I use the FEBS Apps as a Service table search? And the demo that I'm going to be going through today is using the IBM Forms Experience Builder version 862. And it's a question that has come up quite recently, and there's been some confusion around it. So let's dive right in. In my form, I've created a table object. And this table object has some columns, and in my case, a name, color, and a number. And what I'm doing in my, in my application is I want to search for data that has been added to one of these tables. So let's take a look at my view responses and you can see what I've done. So I've created a couple of records of this form that just has this table in it. And in each one, I've added a few rows, a few unique rows that we'll be able to, to, to use in our example here. OK, so then what I've done is I've created another form. This is my view form. And, and the idea of this form is that I want to search all of these other forms for records in the table that match a specific criteria. So let's say I want to find all of the table values that had a name of Chris. This search is going to return me all of those values. Now if we if we uh, put in an asterisk here you'll see that all of the values that were in each one of these forms have been added to that table. So if we were to go through there's one, two, three, five, six, and eight. And if we look here we'll see eight records. So how did I do that? When you're building a form and we uh, want to use a table service, it's important to recognize that there are some limitations with the, with the service. So when you add a table object to your form and then you go to the service configuration screen, you're going to see two additional services that are related to that table, a search and a retrieve. Now, search is the same as any other search in that it will return all the records. Retrieve returns only one record. But this table search is a little bit different because the table search can only retrieve you the records of one submission. Do you see here where it actually has an input parameter for retrieve by either the unique per identifier, and that's the unique identifier of the main submitted form, or you can search by name, color, or number. But again, that's only going to return you the values of the main form. And we are considering how we can enhance this behavior for a future release where this table search service can actually query across all the submitted records. But right now, it will only return you the table values for one submitted form. So if I want to return all of the table records for all of the submitted records, then I'm going to need to do something a little crazy. And and let me let me show you what I've done here. So all there's there's the code for for this is in is in two places. And the the basic premise for what we're going to do is we're going to return all the record IDs for the main form submissions into a temporary table. And I have that temporary table right here. And all I'm returning are the record IDs. And I'm using a search service to do that. So if I go to settings and I find my search, you'll see here that I'm not providing any input parameters because I want it to return me all of the submitted records. And then the outputs, I'm going to return the, re the record unique identifier. And I'm going to pass that into 
the table that's in my hidden section. Okay, so that's the first part. The second part is that once I have that table, I want to iterate through each of those rows. And for each row that I find, I want to execute another service call. This is going to be the table service call. And I want to return all of the table records into this other temporary table. And as I do that, I'm going to, once those are returned, I'm going to check each one to, to see if it meets the criteria that I've specified. And if it does, then I'm going to add it to my table that I'm showing to the user. And if it doesn't, then I'm just going to throw it away. And then I'm going to move on to the next main record and continue on that way until I've processed all of the records. Okay, so how do we kick this whole thing off? It's done through the on item change event of each one of these fields. I check to see if the value is em is not empty. If it's not, then I clear the table, which is the one that that is being shown to the users. I reset my global counter, which is the keeping track of what row we're processing, and then I execute the service to get the main records. Once that service completes, there will be a set of records in this hidden table. The rest of the code is in the onload event. So here I have a listener where once the main record service is done, I'm going to then iterate through each of the rows. Now you can't just use a standard for loop in this case because service calls are asynchronous. So, and what that means is that they, they, uh, when you execute one, it's, it's not dependent on anything else. It's just going to go and run and then it's going to return. So if you ran a for loop, you would initiate a whole bunch of services and each one would return when it was done but we don't want that. We want the services to wait un until we're done processing. And so we have to control how we initiate them. So we're going to use this global variable, this current row variable, to control when we trigger one of these services to be started. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to get the first row within that table. And I'm going to set it into a hidden field which is this temp R, R ID. And this is the record ID that we're going to be processing. And we need to do this because if we want to pass that as an input to our service, we have to have a field. So I set the R ID into the temporary field and then I call the child record service. And the child record service is going to go and retrieve all of the table records for that main record. And it's going to put them into that temporary table that I showed before. When that service is done, we're going to iterate through that table. We're going to check to see if the row meets the criteria of the name or the color or the number. And if it does, then we're going to add it to the table. We're going to increment our current row counter. If there are more rows to process in the main record table, then we're going to uh, set the new RID into the temporary field, and then we're going to call the child record service on that to get the new child records. And this loop will continue until all of the main records have been processed. So let's take a look again at how it operates. I can put in a color and you can see it populates the main record table and, and it happens really quickly but it, it copies the RID into the temporary field. It, it, it calls and gets the temporary child records. It puts them into the table and then it gets the next temp um, main RID, copies it, gets the child records, copies those that apply up into our UI table here. If I enter another value, then it's going to do the same thing, and it's going to only copy the ones that meet both criteria. So I hope you found this example helpful. I hope you understand better how uh, the search service works for a table. And hopefully in the future, we'll be able to improve it so that this kind of uh, workaround isn't, isn't necessary. But for now, good luck. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post in the, in the community.
Thank you for your time.